Hello, Geometry. Welcome to lesson three. Uh, and know that it's not a typo. We are doing Pythagorean theorem today. Uh, but we're just going to be doing a little bit more with it than you've probably seen. So recall real quick what the Pythagorean theorem is. It is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Just a reminder, it works with right triangles. So a right triangle has side lengths of four feet and eight feet. Find the length of the hypotenuse. Give your answer in simple stratical form and round it to the nearest tenth. So the legs are A and B. So I gave you those and um, we're looking for the hypotenuse or C. So four squared plus eight squared equals C squared. This is a very common problem that you've probably done several times. Remember at the end, you wanna get the hypotenuse, you gotta take the square root. So the square root of 80, I'm just gonna save us some time. We've done a lot of radical stuff already. Uh, simplest radical form is gonna be four radical five. Rounded, I'm going to type that in the calculator. It's going to be really close to 9. It's 8.9. So rounded, it's 8.9. And that is what the Pythagorean theorem does. Okay? Not what this lesson is really looking at. We're going to do that a lot, but not um, the focus here. Some of the new stuff. A Pythagorean triple. So a Pythagorean triple is a set of three numbers. So triple comes in, that represents side lengths of a right triangle. To see if a set of numbers is a Pythagorean triple, you plug them into the Pythagorean theorem. If it works, like if the numbers of the left side and the right side are equal, it is a Pythagorean triple. If they're not equal, then it's not a Pythagorean triple. All right, so you know this, but the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. Number one, that's really easy to see. That's the longest side, so that's got to be the one that's by itself. So I'm going to plug them in. 8 squared plus 16 squared. And we're looking to see, are they equal to 24 squared? So 64 plus 256. Does that equal whatever 24 squared is, which I believe is 576? It is. So 64 plus 256 is 320. They are definitely not equal. So those are not making a right triangle. Okay. Number two is not as easy to tell what the longest side is. Six radical three, a lot of you don't really know what that is as far as actual length. You can do a couple different things. You could square that. 12 squared is 144. If six radical three squared is bigger than 144, then it's bigger than 12. If it's not bigger than 12 or not bigger than 144, then it's not bigger than 12. Or what I like to do, type it in your calculator. 6 radical 3 is about 10.4. So it's less than 12, meaning 12 is my biggest side. So now I'm going to check it. 6 squared plus 6 radical 3 squared equals 12 squared. Or does it equal 12 squared, I guess is what I'm asking. So 36 plus something equals 144. Now 6 radical 3 squared. Do not just type that in your calculator. If you do, you're probably going to get 18, which is not correct. Right? If you type that in your calculator without the parentheses, you will get yeah, 18, which is not correct. 6 radical 3 times 6 radical 3 is 36 times radical 9, which is 36 times 3, which is 108. Very different than 18. If you are a calculator person, make sure you put parentheses around that. 36 plus 108 is 144. And look, they are in fact equal, which means those sides make up a Pythagorean triple. It makes a right triangle. Okay. Now, if a set of numbers does not form a Pythagorean triple, we can classify the triangle by its angles. Yes, I know those are side lengths. 8, 16, and 24 are side lengths. But we can actually now classify it by its angles. It's another thing that's kind of new in this lesson. And what it says is it's hard to remember. So I'm going to give you a way to help you remember it. If C squared is bigger than A squared plus B squared, then the triangle is obtuse. If C squared is smaller than A squared plus B squared, then the triangle is acute. Now, the way I like to look at it, I look at C squared. If C squared is bigger... then it's obtuse. If C squared is smaller, then it's acute. So I'm looking up here at number one. Look at C squared. 
576. Is it bigger than the other number or smaller? It's bigger. So this one up here is obtuse. Those would make an obtuse triangle. Okay. All right, moving down. Another practice with that same idea. Classify the triangle by its angles. Four, six, and seven. Again, you want to look at the biggest side and make it by itself. The other two, square them and add them. So 16 plus 36, and this is 49. 16 plus 36 is 52. This is 49. So C squared is smaller here. I almost want to write it down. C squared is smaller, which means this is an acute triangle. Next one, biggest side is 17. So 8 squared plus 15 squared. 17 squared. So that's 64 plus 225. 17 squared is 289. If I add those two numbers, I get 289 and 289. They're equal. What does that mean? If they're equal, it's a right triangle. All right. Um, now we're going to start applying some situations and um, some little more complex problems. Some applications here. A baseball diamond is actually a square with 90 foot sides. So a baseball diamond is actually a square, which means these are all right angles. Those are the bases. And the length is 90 feet on all four sides. What this is asking is how far does the catcher have to throw the baseball if he is throwing it from home plate to second, second base? So what's that distance? You see how you make a right triangle there with the two legs? It's just 90 squared plus 90 squared equals x squared. 90 squared is 8,100. Eighty one hundred plus eighty one hundred is sixteen two hundred, and then take the square root. To the nearest foot, one hundred twenty seven point two, one hundred twenty seven point three. So it's one hundred about one hundred twenty seven feet from home plate to second base. Okay. That was a pretty straightforward application. The next one's not quite as straightforward. Find the area of the triangle. Yes, we just did that in the last lesson. But um, now I'm not giving you as much information. You have to use other, what we're doing in this lesson, to figure it out. So I'm going to need the base and the height, right? Those are the two things I need. Height, I don't know. That's why there's a variable of h there. The base is 40. I know that the, from one side to the other is 40. Looking for the height. How am I going to find it? Well, we're doing the Pythagorean theorem. More than likely, we're probably going to use it in this lesson. So if the whole base is 40, can we cut this in half and say that those are equal? Well, let's see. We have to first prove the triangles are congruent. Well, I know that these are congruent because they're both 29. I know this is congruent to itself because it's reflexive. And I know if, that's a, if this is a 90-degree angle, then the other side is also a 90-degree angle. HL theorem says the two triangles are congruent. So yes, we can conclude that these two sides are the same, which helps me because I can put 20 and 20. Now I've got a right triangle where I know the hypotenuse is 20, and I know that one leg is, or sorry, the hypotenuse is 29, and one leg is 20. Now I can do 20 squared plus h squared equals 29 squared. 20 squared is 400. And 29 squared is 841. Subtract 400, I get 441. And I believe that's a good number. Yep, H is 21. So the height is 21. Now I've got the information I need. I can plug them in. So I get, change color so you can see what I'm doing here. 40 times 21 divided by 2. 420 units squared. All right. And that is 
all of that problem. Let's go down to the bottom. Tricky um, problem here. Find the lengths of the indicated sides if the area of the full triangle, ABC, is um, 24 feet squared. All right, give your answers in simplest radical form, then classify triangle ABC by its sides. So AB is what we're looking for. That's X. And BC is, we'll call it Y. All right. How are we going to find that? I've got a 90 degree angle there. I've got four and eight. And that's about all I've got. Here's my height. The only other thing I've given you is the area of the triangle is 24. How am I going to use that? I'm going to say the area of a triangle is one half base times height. I know the area is 24, so I'm going to plug that in. Do I know the base or the height of the full triangle? Hopefully you can see that the base of the full triangle here is 12. 4 plus 8, 12. The base is 12. The height, I still don't know it, but I can figure it out now because I know everything else. Half of 12 is 6. Divide by 6. I get the height is 4. Now, how does that help me? Well, if the height is 4, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find x and y. I actually don't need the Pythagorean theorem for a, b. Um, there's going to be a question that pops up here in a second. Can you find x without the Pythagorean theorem? you should get that x is 4 radical 2. How do I know? Well, if the two legs are equal, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and therefore the hypotenuse is four leg times radical 2, so 4 radical 2. Now, just so you can see that I'm not lying, 4 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. 16 plus 16 is 32. Square root of 32 breaks down to 4 radical 2. Why? You do have to do Pythagorean theorem here. 4 squared plus 8 squared equals y squared. So that's 16 plus 64 equals y squared. We actually did this one, um, first problem on this notes. That's 80. Square root of 80 was 4 radical 5. Now, last part says classify the full triangle by its angles. So it's either going to be right, obtuse, or acute. How can we tell if we know all three sides, right? Our three sides are 4 radical 2, 4 radical 5, and 12. I know 12 is the biggest. Um, if you're not sure why, look at 4 radical 5 down here. That came from the square root of 80. So 4 radical 5 squared is 80. And 4 radical 2 comes from 32. So 12 is bigger than both of those. 12 squared is 144. It's bigger than both of those. Again, if you didn't, if you weren't sure, type them in the calculator. 4 radical 5 is about 8.9. 4 radical 2 is about 5. Point, I don't know, 8, 5.7. Okay. Um, so now we got to check. 4 radical 2 squared plus 4 radical 5 squared. How does it compare to 1 or 12 squared, which is 144? Well, 4 radical 2 squared is 16 radical 4, which is 16 times 2, which is 32. 4 radical 5 squared is 80, right? 16 times square root of 25 or 16 times 5, which is 80. 32 plus 80 is 112. 44. So C squared is bigger. If C squared is bigger, it is an obtuse triangle. Okay. Using the Pythagorean theorem to find other information. That's what this, we're, one of the big things I wanted you to do from this lesson. Right, so that's it for this lesson. Last three lessons are all about area.